it without it. I'll see what I can. Let's see how I do. Let me just make it. Here. <laughs> I don't want you to be like. <laughs> okay, ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Hi, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Divorce Right, HR Solutions for Divorce in the Workplace. I'm your host, Vicki Townsend, and I'm the founder of Divorce Right. Did you know that divorce is one of the most expensive operating expenses that your company probably doesn't even know it has? I created Divorce Right to solve the incredibly expensive problem of divorce in the workplace. Join us each week for tips and resources to mitigate the impact of divorce on your employees and on your company's bottom line. And today, speaking of bottom lines, we're going to be talking about divorce finances in the workplace. And we're going to be joined by my special guest and friend, Christine Lucan. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Christine and why I found it so important to have her on this, uh, on this podcast today. Christine Lucan is a financial coach, an author, and money wellness educator, specializing in the topics of personal finance, stress management, emotional well-being, and healthy relationships. A former vice president of human resources and accounting for a multi-million dollar machine tool manufacturer, Christine is well-versed in engaging employees at all levels of the corporate ladder. Christine has a degree in accounting with a minor in psychology and is certified a certified divorce specialist. Christine teaches employee wellness classes for employers all over the country, in addition to coaching high-earning professionals to pay off staggering amounts of debt and massively increasing their net worth. And you can find her at christinelucan.com. And I will post her, uh, her link in the, uh, in the links below the, the description of this uh, uh, podcast. Hi, Christine. Hi. How are you? I'm glad that you're here today. You're the, you're the boss when it comes to this. And so I want to start <laughs> this out like kind of with a big question. What are the statistics? on financial stress and how it impact, impacts employees. Yeah, well, it most certainly does. Um, it's very interesting. There, there was a recent survey done and 97% of these employees admitted to working on or thinking about their personal finances while they are at work. So money is on our minds all the time. And if someone isn't doing well with money, whether it's because of divorce or because of something else, it directly impacts their productivity. And, you know, being in HR, I, I saw this firsthand with the employees that I managed. However, early in my career, I crashed and burned financially myself, mm. despite having an accounting degree despite working as the staff accountant for this multi-million dollar company. And, you know, it wasn't because I didn't know what to do. It was because I was in a relationship with someone who was terrible with money. Mm -hmm. It was a big source of contention. He was very irresponsible when it came to finances and I was always bailing him out of his messes. And so my money problems followed me to work when I was in that situation. And I'll give you an example. You know, during my lunch break, I remember distinctly one time I had to take my lunch break and I had to go drive to the water company to pay my past due water bill so it, it wouldn't get shut off. Now, as employers, we provide lunch breaks and, you know, other breaks so that employees can be rejuvenated and they can return to their work productive. I just got to tell you, I was not very productive when I got back from that break, right? Because it wasn't really a break. I was trying to handle a financial crisis during my lunch break. And that's, that's not uncommon for, um, for employees to be doing that. And um, I found this statistic very troubling that 40% of Americans struggle to pay an unexpected bill of just $400. Mm. And this was really, you know, this wasn't just employees that are making less than $50,000 a year. There was a, um, a study that was just released within the last week. I think it was a Bloomberg study that a, a third of Americans who are making $250,000 or more are still stressed 
about money. I did. I so, read that they're living, pay, they're, they're living paycheck to paycheck on a quarter of a million dollars a year. Yeah. Is that crazy? Wow. Well, I see it. I see it all the time. I see it with, I see it with my clients. I see it with the people in my, in my audience with, you know, the different people that I'm talking to in, in companies and who are in employee wellness, that this financial piece is huge. And it actually affects retention because financially stressed employees are more likely to be looking for another job. Oh, absolutely. After looking for more money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that great resignation is definitely playing a part of that, right? Absolutely. But the interesting thing is the solution isn't paying people more money necessarily because it's not so much what we make, right? Because we see these people making $250,000 a year. It's what do we do with what we make? And the sad fact is most of us were not taught how to manage money, how to manage our personal finances in high school. You know, some of, some of us were lucky enough to have parents who taught us these things, but, but some people weren't. And it's like, we're expected to know it and we're expected to be good at it, but yet nobody talks about it. Interesting. Interesting. So how does divorce increase that financial uh, stress in that workplace? Oh, oh my gosh. Well, first of all, part of it's just basic math, right? If we are splitting a family unit, we are basically dividing the assets, dividing the income, but then we're also adding and multiplying the expenses because now we have two households, right? We have two rent payments or two mortgage payments. We have a double set of utilities, et cetera. So all those financial efficiencies that we had of being one household, all of a sudden those are gone. And, um, you know, the disparity between how divorce financially affects men and women is pretty staggering. Now, you know, obviously everything is situational dependent um, and there's certainly exceptions to this, but women's household income falls by 41%. So their standard of living is falling by a huge amount. For men, it's usually 23%. So nobody wins financially in a divorce, but that's a huge economic impact on really on both men and women. So you've got that stress there. And then there's also the stress of the uncertainty, mm -hmm. right? Because while you're in the divorce process, you don't know exactly how the financial chips are going to fall until it's completely wrapped up and finished. And that uncertainty can really ramp up the fear and make it even worse than once you know what you're dealing with, right? Because once you know what you're dealing with, then you can make a constructive plan and take action. But being in that period of fear and uncertainty it makes it really hard for people to focus and concentrate and be productive. On right. The job. Exactly. It's the craziness that's going on in your head, the worry, the day to day, how am I going to pay my bills? I've got, you know, my kids have to go to, I have to have a daycare. I have all of these additional expenses that right. at one time were shared. And yeah. now I think all of that come, you know, that kind of come to Jesus meeting, if you will, where they have, they're facing the reality and that makes right. people a little crazy and not acting at their best self when they're probably at work too. Absolutely. And, you know, just that, that amped up emotion, because, you know, even the most civil divorce, there's still going to be some drama, right? There's still going to be heightened emotions when you go through a divorce, even if you're initiating it, you, you're still experiencing a loss and, and you go through emotions, almost the same emotions that people go through when they lose a loved one, right? Because this was something that was a very important fixture in your life. And so, you know, you're going to be experiencing things like grief and anger and, you know, all the feelings 
and we've also never been taught how to process our feelings in a healthy way. Like there isn't a class called emotional intelligence 101 in school. There should be. <laughs> there should be. But there's not. <laughs> <laughs> there absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a great idea, by the way. I hear a business. And, <laughs> yes, exactly. We need we need something like this. We so do. people don't know how to constructively process these emotions. And if they've got a lot of this emotional drama going on and they're trying to make financial decisions in the middle of all of that, it's really hard to hear the voice of reason when mm -hmm. our emotions are loud and wild and crazy. And so that just amplifies the possibility of people making a disastrous decision with their personal finances. Interesting, interesting. So why do you think an employee, you know, doesn't seek help to figure this out for their finances? I mean, that, why yeah. do they, how do they get to that point where they're making a quarter of a million dollars a year and still living paycheck to paycheck? How does that happen? Yeah. Well, you know, 50, a full 50% of employees who are struggling financially are too embarrassed to admit that they need help, right? Because we don't talk openly about finances. And if you make a lot of money, there's almost this expectation that you should know what to do with it, mm -hmm. right? And since many people have never been taught the foundational things, it's just, you're kind of learning these things on the fly. And most financial education doesn't include the emotional component as well. So if people don't know how to manage their emotions, in the middle of all this financial decision making, they can get themselves into a big mess. And so there's a lot of shame around that. And I experienced that personally. I mean, can you imagine being yeah, no, an accountant? I don't like, I don't like talking. And crashing and burning your finances. I mean, <laughs> I'm somebody who's supposed to know better, right? I mean, thank God I hit financial rock bottom at age 26, but I mean, it was still very embarrassing. I mean, I was I was doing the budget for a multi-million dollar company, but I was bouncing my checks, my own checks at home and, you know, completely ruined my credit score. So people get stuck in this cycle of shame and, you know, shame makes you want to withdraw mm -hmm. and hide from the problem rather than reach out and get the help that people actually need. So you know, that's sort of the, the catch 22 that, that we get into. It's like people need this help, but they're embarrassed to ask for the help. So it's kind of like, well, so what do we do about that? Right. <laughs> well, you know, and I'm going to just, uh, one of the things that uh, something that you'll learn about me is I am a huge football fan and oh, I'm cool. also a huge Miami Dolphins football fan. And, um, so I was really, I was a big season ticket holder and blah, blah, blah. And one day I got the opportunity to take a tour of, you know, the locker rooms and was, you know, the, at what I call Joe Robbie stadium. It'll always be Joe Robbie stadium to me. But, um, what was very cool that they do, and I'm, I, I would, I don't know if other teams do this as well, but they actually bring in a financial advisor that happened to have been. A, a football player on the perfect season team that is now a financial advisor. And he takes these, these young men that are given millions of dollars in signing bonuses, and they actually teach them how to manage their finances. And they're, it's, they're not always successful, but they are much more successful than those that come into money that don't know how to save it or don't know how to invest Absolutely. it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's a, that's a great idea for companies out there. And I'm just putting that out there just because I think it's, that was pretty brilliant that what they yeah. did. So yeah. what are well, some tips for companies wanting to help their employees, you know, like, like the Miami Dolphins did to become, stay healthy financially without, you know, kind of getting involved in, in the middle of that whole personal finance, how much money do you have in the bank kind of stuff? Yeah. Because employers, they don't, they don't want to know the details, right? Um, you know, I saw things at, at the company that I worked for where, you know, different managers and owners of the company tried to help employees out and they got personally involved. 
and it usually didn't end very well. So, um, you know, we don't want to be doing that. And I think most HR people would agree that, you know, we don't want to go there. But I think just offering those financial wellness resources is an excellent place to start because, you know, if you're offering it out to everyone and you, you know, you basically have it like as a webinar or, you know, a lunch and learn or something like that, you know, everybody's invited, they can kind of feel like they're getting lost in the crowd in a good way, right, of being able to attend. Um, and even being able to access those types of resources anonymously, right? So we're, we're seeing a lot more things where, you know, there's like an employee portal and, you know, there's a video resource library. Just letting employees know like, hey, this stuff is in here. And I think the one trick is being able to find the resources that don't just give the financial literacy, but also address you know, the psychology of money and that behavioral emotional side as well, because those are very important tools for people to, to take that head knowledge and actually apply it and be able to understand, you know, why is it hard for me to save or why am I an emotional spender and what are some constructive things that I can do about that? So, um, you know, and especially with the, with the divorce, piece of it, um, if they can offer divorce specific um, education around finances or being able to connect them with people that can answer those questions, um, because that can just be a very stressful and scary time for employees. Agreed, agreed. Um, what about people like you, a financial coach or a financial yeah. coach? T tell us about that. Yeah, well, you know, a financial coach like myself, um, especially one who's had training and, you know, on the emotional side of money and also on the divorce piece of it, because that can be complicated as well. Mm -hmm. Well, we can proactively be handholding individuals and, and helping them to get through that stressful period and to, and to set up a system for them to manage their finances so that they can carry that, that forward. Um, I find that especially the individual of the couple who wasn't um, primarily involved in managing the money, that person usually needs more help. So I coach a lot of women who are divorcing someone who was a financial professional. You know, it's like their, their husband was a CPA or a financial planner or a banker. And so that person handled all of the finances and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, yeah. I have to do this by myself. And, you know, it's like, I, I kind of sort of know what I should be doing, but there's a huge amount of anxiety for the person that was not involved in the finances. And so, you know, for certain individuals, they may need that extra one-on-one -on -one attention to be able to have success. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. What else? What else do you think is the the uh, another important um, thing that that an employer can do um, to help their employees through something like this? Well, I think just having the compassion and and showing that hey, we understand that this is a really hard time for you, and providing those resources. I think employers or employees are much more likely to be loyal to an employer who they know really cares about them. And you've probably heard the saying that people don't quit companies, they quit bosses. So, you know, if you as the boss, you as the HR person are able to show that compassion and that caring and offer those resources that are going to help them through that tough time, they're always going to remember that. Absolutely. I, I'll, I'll tell you that in our training, we talk about that very specifically because one, you know, 5% of divorcing employees actually quit. And mm -hmm. there are things that can be done, but the, one of the biggest reasons that people quit after divorce is because they felt uncared for 
and they felt, you know, uh, and we, I, I hear it time after time after time when um, an employer just screams at their employee, don't leave your divorce at home, you know, don't bring that stuff here. But understanding that that's impossible, right? And had they known that that is a key reason why people go, you know what, you didn't care about me when at my, why, why are you going to ask me to spend my Saturday or my, you know, 10, 12 hour a days working for you when I feel like it didn't come back to me. So that's very, that's very, very good advice. Mm -hmm. And I, I super, I appreciate your knowledge on this topic and what you do. So uh, we're going to close this down. Christine, tell me um, if you would, your contact information and how people can get in touch with you and, um, and learn more about what you do. Yeah. Well, the best place for people to reach me is on my website, which is my name, christinelukin.com. Or if they want to email me directly, they can do that too. It's christine at christinelukin.com. Um, if they want information about coaching or money wellness, uh, I love to talk about money. I can, I can talk about money. I all know day long. you do. I know you do. <laughs> and that's why you're here because we know that this is a really important topic and it really is. This is such an important topic. Money is the, is one of the things I think money and children are the two things I think in this whole divorce process that makes people absolutely crazy and lose their, you know, all their sense of, you know, their dignity and their, everything can go out the window when they're fearful. You talked about being so fearful around Mm -hmm. money and how they're going to pay their bills and how they're going to make their mortgage payments and how they're going to be able to send their kids to a good private school. So it's really, it, this impacts them in so many ways. And divorce is a time of just unsettlement, if that's such a word, but you know, when people are just trying to make their way across like this crazy bridge that's going in every different way. And every, t- every time you take a step, it's something different. So um, I'm, I'm glad that we had this conversation today, Christine. Thank you so much for being a part of Divorce Right and helping uh, employers help their employees through the financial crisis that they go through when they go through divorce. So thank you so much. And everybody else, I hope that you'll join us each and every week for tips like this for bringing solutions to divorce in the workplace. Again, my name is Vicki Townsend and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.